Hello and welcome to Juniper Dunes Wilderness, about 30 minutes outside of Pasco, Washington. More or less, it's, you know, 30 minutes to get here and then a little bit further up some sandy trails. Let's see, Rattlesnake Mountain, I believe, is this ridge here. Pasco, Washington is back over this way a little bit more. And we're on Wilderness Trail or Wilderness Road, I think perhaps the only gated entrance to Juniper Dunes Wilderness. So I'll flip you around and we'll go over this ridge and see what it's all about. There's a locked car entrance for the official entries and then a little narrow walkway for people limiting animal entrance, I'm sure as well. I'm not entirely sure why this is, oh wait, no. I do know why this is gated off and that's in part because all of this area on the outside of the gate is an OHV area or off-road vehicle trails just they can crisscross as much as they want over there but inside the wilderness area no go you can see the grassland is a lot more intact here with very few trails it looks like and these are all stabilized dunes, is my understanding. I'm here, as you saw, with my daughter, so I don't know how much hiking we'll do. And there's a bit of weather coming in. It's supposed to have a chance for rain later, and there were a couple of sprinkles on the windshield on the way in. But I thought we'd just come here, check things out, see what it's all about. The Wilderness Dunes is a several thousand acre, completely enclosed by fence wilderness area, which I was kind of surprised to hear or to learn that this whole area is enclosed by fence. And that means that the only access I've, I'm pretty sure is from this gate that I just walked away from. And as a result, I don't think the wilderness itself is very, I don't know, popular might not be the right word, but frequented maybe. In the summer, wilderness dunes trail can be pretty hairy from what I understand. That's kind of the off off road access to the the gate where it comes off of Juniper Dunes Road, which is the main kind of entryway to the OHV area. In the summer months, they recommend that you park at the OHV area and take the mile or so walk up to the, the gated entrance. I started to do that, but then with her on my chest and some weather moving in, it would have been a long walk back if it started to turn for the worse. Now there's no, there's no water here. There are no bathrooms. So pack it in, pack it out, bring what you need. That's right. Uh, let's see. There's no, clearly no real trails, like marked trails, I guess I should say. Someone made this trail or something made this trail. And we're just following it. Oh, you can see some juniper dunes or some juniper trees. Some juniper trees here. And then in the distance, just over that ridge there, there's lots of them. Let's see if we can find some less stabilized dunes. We're approaching a stabilized dune here, kind of into the wind, unfortunately. And we are in, you know, eastern Washington. It's very dry. We have to irrigate crops out here, even though the soil is pretty good for it. 
but with all that you might think that this dune field is you know really really old there's lots of you know old basalt to weather away and bring into the fold but as it happens the majority of the sand for juniper dunes apparently comes from a mixture of the Ice Age floods or the Tushi beds, which were the you know flood slack water deposits that were laid down once the big floods hit Wallula Gap and backed up into the area. And the other one is, uh, let's see, oh the the other one is the Luss or the fine sandy silty wind-blown deposits that make the Palouse area so rolling hilly and good for farming. Now I think the Luss is a couple million years old at least, but the slackwater Tushi beds are from the Ice Age, so like, I don't know, 13,000 years ago were the floods, plus or minus. So if this is a mixture of those two, this area is, geologically speaking, still relatively young, even if it was a couple million years old. Let's crest this hill and see where we're at. There's some new growth down underneath there. I don't know if you can see those little green buds. There's some there. I wonder what those will be turning into. Oh, I could see this being a really bad area for ticks in the right season and also for rattlesnakes, which can be on the trail in the, in the dune area and here. So I don't think I would go off trail like I'm doing in a non, uh, in an off, or unless it was off season like it is now, where we're barely above 60 degrees right now. I have a little girl in a coat because it's pretty windy here, as you can tell by the sound. But this is a nice walk. And we're heading back to the car because if I turn you around, it looks like the you know major juniper dune area or the juniper tree is on the far ridge there, which is probably a lot longer uh, of a hike than it looks, and it does look kind of long. This is, you know, several thousand acres. So we're not going to get to any really big young dune areas. Looks like this is all more established, possibly because it gets a lot more of the initial moisture and then kind of the central area gets less. I don't know. Oh, and another reason you may not want to come here in the too, in the too warm season besides snakes and ticks is a, a lot of this brush is really prickly. And I wouldn't really want to be walking out here in pants or in, in shorts and, and even if it was really hot. I made this little detour on the way back to the car because it looked like on the satellite images there was a exposed sand dune here. So I think we'll scramble up to the top of it and probably call it a video up there. A little more signs of wildlife here too, some tracks in the sand dunes. One step forward, two steps back. That's the life of a sand dune walker. You can see the ripple marks in the prevailing wind direction. But I wanted to get up to the top of this dune, not because of the wind, because it sucks, but I was hoping to be able to see this, which is 
So we have our relatively unstabilized portion of the sand dune. And we have a lobe going this way. The prevailing wind direction is coming straight at us right now. <clears throat> There's a little bit of a lobe here, but we have another big lobe over here. And so if we trace it, this makes a big arc to where I'm standing and then back out and around. And these are transverse dunes where the uh, front face of them kind of is in the perpendicular orientation to the prevailing wind direction. Now it's been long enough from sedimentology that I don't remember exactly why that is, but that's the case for the sand dunes here. But I guess we might as well check out the sand while we're here. Very uniform in size, as you would expect from windblown sediment. Fairly dark. I mean, it's a, maybe a little bit wet. But it looks like there's a few darker mineral grains in there. But there you have it. That's the, you know, entryway to the Juniper Dunes wilderness area outside of Pasco, Washington. If you're in the area, it's a really easy access to stop on by. And if you're into sand dunes and that kind of thing, it's right up your alley. Well, since we're almost back to the car, I figure I'll throw out some superlatives and cut out the ones that don't match or correct myself post it video here. So I believe this is the largest totally enclosed wilderness area, at least in the Pacific Northwest, perhaps the United States. This might also be the only sand dunes. I believe it's, it's the only sand dune field in Washington state. Possibly the entire Pacific Northwest as well, which makes it extra special. I know there's a number of other sand dunes uh, fields in other states, but this is if this is the only one that you can access in the Pacific Northwest, then you know your options are pretty limited. You want to see sand you got to come here. Uh, now there are also a bunch of sand dunes uh, in Hanford Reach National Monument which is kind of in the direction of uh, Rattlesnake Mountain there but a little further north along uh, the south side of Saddle Mountains uh, and along the Columbia River near the Hanford uh, nuclear site. That might be the only superlatives that I can think of for this area. But it's also the first time I've been here. Maybe the last, I don't know. I don't know if I'll come here in a different time of year. If you like these sort of random wanderings, geology, science, lapidary, that kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.